This Week at NASA. Okay, guys, let's go. The first hatchlings from endangered sea turtle eggs at possible risk by the BP oil spill were released into the Atlantic Ocean off the Kennedy Space Center on July 11. There they go. Hop on. <laughs> Yay! Oh, that's awesome. So this is the very first Gulf Coast nest from the oil, Deep Horizon oil spill. After their collection at a Florida panhandle beach, the eggs of 22 Kemp's Ridley turtles were brought to a secure climate control facility at Kennedy where the nest was monitored until incubation was complete. Tonight, we'll take the um, hatchlings and put them in here. We'll reduce the amount of sand because it's too heavy. Okay. <clears throat> we'll put them in here and we'll take them to the beach in this. Federal and state agencies and conservationists hope to relocate and release over the next several months about 700 sea turtle nests deposited on Gulf Coast beaches in Florida and Alabama. This means they survived the excavation process, they survived the trip across the state of Florida, they made it into our facility, and they are doing what they normally would do, and this is, this is just great. The last external fuel tank scheduled to fly on a space shuttle mission arrived at the Kennedy Space Center after a 900-mile journey from New Orleans to Florida. The tank, designated ET-138, will be mated to the Orbiter Endeavour and two solid rocket boosters for STS-134. ET-138 is the 134th external fuel tank built by Michoud workers and delivered to the space shuttle program over a span of 37 years. The STS-134 mission to deliver the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer experiment and other hardware to the International Space Station is targeted to launch from Kennedy on February 26. A new satellite about the size of a loaf of bread is being readied for launch. NASA's Organism Organic Exposure to Orbital Stresses, or OREOs, will launch into orbit aboard a Minotaur IV rocket from Kodiak Island, Alaska, as part of a mission to demonstrate and conduct low-cost science experiments on nanosatellites. It's the first CubeSat, or miniature autonomous satellite, to carry two distinct science experiments simultaneously. One will test how microorganisms survive and adapt to the stresses of space. The other will monitor organic molecule stability in space. Nanosatellites can reduce costs and with multiple payloads increase the frequency of research missions in space. Oreos is scheduled to launch no earlier than September 1st. Former Star Trek star and avid NASA supporter Nichelle Nichols took a tour of the Johnson Space Center as part of the Traveling Space Museum, or TSM, project. TSM partners with schools to promote space studies and provide mentoring to underserved students in the STEM disciplines of science, technology, engineering, and math. Accompanying Nichols was 11-year-old Imani McGee, whose family was displaced from its East New Orleans home by Hurricane Katrina. After relocating to the Houston area, they were sent packing again, this time by Hurricane Rita. Through it all, Imani, who's now back with her family in New Orleans, has remained an outstanding elementary school student. Since her Star Trek days, Nichols, who played Lieutenant Uhura, has maintained a special relationship with NASA. In the 1970s, she was instrumental in recruiting minority astronauts to the agency. An animated lunar complex, complete with the botanical hothouse, and the moon expressed in graphite and color pencil with an original soundtrack. Just two of the visionary award-winning entries in this year's Life and Work on the Moon Art and Design Contest. More than 200 international students submitted work depicting imaginative lunar lifestyles using various artistic media. Dalton Mills, a student at Central High School in La Crosse, Wisconsin, took the overall prize of $1,000 for his video and animation entry, Moonshot. Mills says he was inspired by NASA documentaries, other artists, and science and physics classes. Mitchell Peterson of Sheridan College in Sheridan, Wyoming, won the college division with his piece, Beyond the Atmosphere. And Brennan Barrington, a student at Licking Heights High School in Patascala, Texas, 
came out on top in the high school division for Helium 3, his short story inspired by Jack London work. The winning artwork will be digitally displayed in NASA centers and museums around the country. To view this year's winning entries, visit http colon forward slash forward slash artcontest.cet.edu. It was 1975, the year two former spaceflight rivals, the United States and the Soviet Union, forged the first international space partnership. Then five meters distance. Three metro. Three meters. On July 15, 1975, an Apollo spacecraft launched from the Kennedy Space Center with astronauts Tom Stafford, Vance Brand, and Deke Slayton. Two days later, their capsule docked with a Soyuz spacecraft carrying two cosmonauts, Valery Kubasov and Alexei Leonov. Over a nine-day period, the Apollo-Soyuz test project assessed the compatibility of rendezvous and docking systems of the American and Soviet spacecraft. ASTP paved the way for the future joint U.S.-Russian space ventures, Shuttle Mir, and today's International Space Station. ASTP was the last Apollo mission and the last manned U.S. space mission until the first shuttle flight in April 1981. And that's this week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, log on to www.nasa.gov.